it was like this really dramatic emotional scene and I was like, don't touch me and whatever. And after we were finished, people would be like, yeah, woo, we did Gavin. Hello everyone. Welcome back for a brand new episode of Collider Ladies Night. Today, I'm lucky enough to have Victoria Justice on the show to talk about trust. Hello and congratulations. Hi, thank you so much. So excited. Yeah. It is good to see you again. I will say to all of our viewers, one of the coolest things was when I hosted a SAG Q&A for you and I watched you stand there and spend time with everyone who came to see you and it just made my heart feel so full. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Wait, which Q&A was this? Was this the uh, summer, summer night? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh man. I totally forgot. That is amazing. That was a, that was a mighty good group that night. It was a good time. That was really fun. That was so much fun. God, I love that cast. That was a great night. So on ladies night, I warned you, we go back to the very beginning. And today we are taking a three step approach of sorts of tackling that we're going to hit some sources of inspiration, kind of what you picture the dream being, and then also step one to actually achieving that dream. So first off, what was the source of inspiration that first made you say, I have to be an actor? Was it a personal experience, a movie you saw, seeing an idol do it, you name it? Oh, you know, I think it's so many things. To be honest, I mean, the thing that like really first got me started when I was young, I was watching Barney. I loved Barney. I loved that they would sing and there were like kids my age on it. And I just remember watching TV and watching Barney and watching kids and like TV commercials. And I, it kind of all started with me seeing this on TV and screaming to my mom for her to come in from the other room. And I was like, mom, do you see those kids? Like that kid, like, I, I think I can do that. I want to do that. How do I do it? Um, and you know, no one else in my family was in the business. My mom really had no idea. And I kind of started doing child modeling in Florida and my first commercial audition was for Ovaltine and I ended up getting it. So, I mean, I would say that that was sort of like the basis of it. But then from there, I mean, watching shows like, you know, I loved Lizzie McGuire. So like Hilary Duff was like a big inspiration for me and like Raven Simone on That's So Raven, Amanda Bynes. I love strong comedic actresses and I've always loved music. And my mom would always, when I would be driving to modeling jobs, we had like a VHS um, player in our car so I could watch movies in the car on my way to these jobs. And um, I remember her introducing me to Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand. And me just being blown away. Like, I just want to be like her. I want to do that. I want to sing. I want to act. And she's so fabulous and confident. And, um, and I just loved it. And, and then I also remember when I was in LA, a moment for me was when I was watching um, Almost Famous, the Cameron Crowe film. And I love that movie so much. And just watching Kate Hudson's performance, it really made an impact on me. She's such a great actress. And I love the character that she was playing. And, um, the writing was so good. And I was just like, gosh, I would love to do something like that one day. So again, lots of variety right there. When you first committed to pursuing a career in acting and you pictured yourself making it, so to speak, what did you picture? Was it a career flourishing in comedy? Was it doing action, anything at all? I think for me, it was always being able to do music and to be acting. So like, I love musicals. I just always pictured like someone like Jennifer Lopez or like a Justin Timberlake. My mom has always taught me to dream big as well. Like she doesn't think small and that's one of my favorite things about her. And so I always kind of felt like, well, why not? You know, like, why, why can't I sing? And why can't I, why can't I just do both? Um, so I think those people have really inspired me a lot. So with that whole de idea of like, why can't I do this? What, do you remember what the very first step was that made you think, okay, now I am doing this. Like I took that first step, it's working and I can really get there. I mean, gosh, I mean, well, when I, when I first moved out to LA, I, I, my mom enrolled me in a, in a summer program um, for musical theater. So I had, um, I had like singing and acting and drama every day. And then I had to audition to get accepted into the, into the actual musical theater program for the school. And so I had that training every day, three hours every day, um, which I think prepped me a lot. And I think, I don't know. I mean, I think once being a child actor was awesome and, and doing Zoe 101 was a big break for me, but then getting my own show on Nickelodeon and doing Victorious was definitely a big moment for me, obviously. And, um, 
especially because I was, I, you know, it was setting me up to be able to do both, to act and to sing. And I think at that point, um, you know, I was, I was writing and recording songs and I discovered this like new passion for writing that I never even really knew that I was good at, but that I became then obsessed with. Um, and I think at that moment is when I sort of felt like, oh, like maybe this is actually possible. You know, I could maybe really, I can maybe really do this. I don't know. <laughs> I heard you tried to throw the competition for me. I shouldn't have called you a jerk. It's okay. Well, I guess this is goodbye. I hate to say goodbye because, you know, we just met and now it's like you're going to be leaving in this. It's okay. With Zach and Cody, I know it was only one episode there, but of course you eventually went on to have a much more substantial role in other shows. So is there anything that you took from seeing Dylan and Cole kind of lead a show and be such a big part of it that you took on with you to your more substantial projects? I think I was 11 when I was on that show. That might have been like my first guest starring role. It was certainly my first kiss with Cole. I'll never forget that. Um, but no, I mean, I think just watching them you just, they, they just did such a great job. And there's, there's a lot to balance, you know, when you're a kid and you're doing, you're trying to get all your hours of school work in. And then, you know, you're also working these long hours. And then you're also trying to find time to still be like a normal kid and like hang out with friends. And I've always admired that about Dylan and Cole is that like, even though they've been in the spotlight since they were so young and are so famous, they're so normal. Like when you hang out with them, they're not, they're just super grounded down to earth, cool guys and their parents, um, their dad specifically, I think has always like made it that way for them. And um, I always admired that a lot. Is it safe to assume that your mom kind of filled that role for you? Definitely. Oh yeah. Yeah. My mom, my mom and I are super close and my mom would come to set with me all the time. And my mom has always been very involved in my career and in my life. And both my parents have been, I'm so lucky to have two incredibly supportive, amazing parents. I mean, it's, you know, it's not every day that, you know, your parents will just be like, yeah, let's take a shot on our kid. And like, you know, my wife and, and my, my daughter are just going to move to LA and like, they're going to go for it and we're going to fly out there and, and, and it seems to be going pretty well. So we're going to move out there too and see how it goes. You know, it's pretty crazy. It's, I feel very lucky that they believed in me. And I also feel very lucky that they're such like grounded. They're just very grounded centered people. Going into Zoe now, even though you've had so much experience, do you think you were fully prepared to do a 40 plus episode run on a show? Or was there anything about being committed to a series for that long that still surprised you? No, I mean, I think I, it was like my dream come true, honestly. Like I remember um, watching Zoe 101 in, you know, our little apartment in LA with my sister and watching that intro and, and seeing all the kids and the, ooh, I know you see me standing here and them on their jet X's and I was just like, oh gosh, how lucky are they? That is the coolest thing ever. They get to film the show with all these other like people their age. It's just like the coolest show and they're like on the beach and they're so cool. Um, and I was just like, gosh, I'm that I would love to be on a show like that. And then I, I swear it was like several weeks later that I got the casting call that they were looking for a new roommate. And I remember like auditioning for it and um, I, was, I was young. I was younger than some of the other cast members. So and I was like, I was like literally a human stick bug. Like if you watch these episodes back, I was like a little twig girl, <laughs> just like limbs, just skinny little limbs flopping around. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't really think that I had a shot. I think I kind of thought I was too young, but I worked so hard on the audition and had like, I knew it like the back of my hand and I wanted it so bad. And then, yeah, I just, I can't believe that I actually got it. And that actually worked out. It really was like a dream come true for me. So for me, I was just like, I was over the moon beyond excited. I was working with people my age. We all got along. It was like a dream, it, literally a dream. It very much sounds like it. So again, we've already talked about Victorious a little. You eventually go on to headline your own show. So is there anything about how Jamie Lynn Spears operated on that show as the title character, number one on the call sheet that influenced what you want to do when you were able to lead your own show? Jamie's a hard worker and she did a great job. I think I definitely took some things away from that, just knowing that 
you know, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of work, but I think I, I just wanted it so bad. And on some levels, maybe when I first started Victorious, I was confident, but I was also very nervous. And, you know, there's always that doubt of like, you know, can I do this? And it's like, a, it's a scary thing a little bit, but at the same time, I just remembered that was also just such like a surreal pinch me moment to be getting your own show on Nickelodeon, which, you know, I've watched ever since I was a little girl. It was, it, it was, it's like winning the lottery. And it was like my, all like my dreams were coming true. I was down. I was down to do whatever. I was going to work as many hours as I had to. Like I was ready, you know, I was a little scared, but I was so excited. I always think about how that balance of excitement with an opportunity like that paired with some nerves is super appropriate because those nerves are just a sign that you deeply care about what you're doing. Of course. And they, they don't ever go away. Still to this day, I get nervous. <laughs> I get nervous before every single interview that I do. And while it frustrates me in the moment, I hold tight to it every single time because I'm afraid if it goes away, it means that I'm not as invested and, and crazy passionate about it. So I never want it to go anywhere. I like that. I think that's a good way of looking at it. So going through your run with Victorious, do you remember any specific moments of, I guess, kind of your acting craft evolving, so to speak? You know, a moment where you learned something and then you saw how that lesson learned changed the episodes that were taped after that. I think like anything, the more you practice it, the easier it gets. So it's like, it starts to become muscle memory. You know, in the beginning, I think when you're learning lines and you're rehearsing and then you have to do, um, you know, at the end of every rehearsal day, you would basically put on a play for all the writers and producers to make sure the jokes are landing. And at first that was very daunting and scary. And I think like anything, just I just kept doing it and we all kept doing it and doing it and doing it. So then we just became like this well-oiled machine where it just sort of, it, it just was like flowing. Um, so I feel like that's the only thing I'm, I'm really thinking of right now. And I think, I don't know, something that was just crucial for me on that show was just, I, I did so many silly things and I, I love comedy so much, but there were certain times still where I was like, Oh my gosh, I have to do that. Like, that's kind of embarrassing. I don't know like, how I'm going to make this work or do that. But um, that's one of my favorite things about comedy is that I kind of like making a fool of myself deep down. And um, I like that. I, I really had to like push myself sometimes and it pushed me as far as like physical comedy goes. I got to do a lot of physical comedy, which was really fun. Um, but yeah, I think like anything, it's, it's a muscle. And the more you do it, just the, the better that you become. Ooh, I want to jump all around and ask about so much of what you just brought up, but to not ruin my chronological order here, I did want to ask you about what it was like for you when the show came to a close, because you have a huge fan base. A lot of people love Victorious, but you're an actor on a show and there's only so much that's in your control. So when you're still that young and that early on in your career, what was it like kind of balancing fan expectations and also, you know, the situation that you were in, in terms of a show not being in your control? Yeah, it definitely was not in my control at all. I, I, I had no decision-making uh, power there whatsoever. Um, and to be honest, I, I thought that the show was for sure going another season. Like there was no doubt in my mind we were going to go another season. Um, so I was honestly just as shocked as everyone else. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, of course I would, I would have loved for our show to have like an epic finale. Cause I think it, it did deserve that. Um, and I think it would have been so epic and, and really, really fun, but you know, life goes on and I'm just so grateful that so many people did love the show and to this day still watch the show. Um, and I think as an actor, you know, you also get to a certain point where you're, you know, I was growing up, I was maturing, I was evolving. And, um, I think I was 20 at that point. So I was also ready to branch out and try new things and take on some more mature roles and, um, I was exploring music a little bit more at that time. And um, so I think all of us, to be honest, were ready in our own ways to, to move on and try our other things. But I think, I think we all felt that we would have loved like a more like final um, finale, but you know, it is all good and, and it's a great show and people love it. And I'm very proud of it. With what you brought up earlier in terms of the shows that inspired you that have a younger viewership. How did that change when you hit this point in your career? What shows and movies were you looking towards at that point where you're like, now that's what I want to do? Oh, okay. So yeah, um, I loved Girls. I loved Lena Dunham. I was just really 
wanting to take on some more mature roles. Um, and yeah, I mean, to this day, still, I would love, I would love to work with Lena Dunham. I think she's so incredibly talented and I just love her style. I loved, I, I love things that feel real, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I really admire her and I really admired that show a lot. I know this industry has a habit of boxing folks in to the things that they've done before and that they've done very well. So did you encounter that at all at that point where everyone was looking at your Nickelodeon work and it was kind of tough to break out of that realm? I went on tour after the show was over and then decided to take a break from that because I wanted to do a show for MTV called Eye Candy, which was like this dark, twisted, sexy thriller and so actually, I didn't feel boxed in by that at all. I felt like that was quite a big departure from what I had been doing. It was very dramatic. It was very dark. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think there are, yeah, there probably, there are times where people maybe do want to box me in and I get sent certain kinds of scripts and whatnot, but um I'm pretty proud of myself and I feel like I've done a good job of sort of diversifying the roles that I've played. And there have been opportunities for me to play, you know, the pretty popular girl or whatever. And um, to me, it's always more interesting. Like I, I would prefer to play like the nerdy, awkward girl that, you know, has something else going on. It's just like more exciting to me. So I, um, I did that in a movie that I did called The Outcasts that came out like several years ago. I don't know, but there's always probably going to be a, a little bit of that, but I think slowly but surely, maybe I'm working my way out. I don't know. I feel like that's what <laughs> has to do in their career. That's, that's almost like the only trajectory you could have. Yeah. I mean, I feel like also when I did the Rocky Horror Picture Show remake on Fox, that was like a big moment for me. That was really fun. And that was certainly like, not anything that anyone would have seen on Nickelodeon. I was in my bra for like 75% <laughs> of the movie singing, like touch me and everything. So um, yeah. Here's something that's kind of a big departure. I did want to ask you about States of Fright because I love the horror genre so much. So I was wondering, also I was very into covering Quibi when it was on. So cool. what was your first impression of Quibi the platform when you signed on for that? And I guess now looking back, was, was is it at all of a surprise that that kind of format didn't really take off or that kind of platform maybe? Right. When I signed on for it, I didn't know much about it, to be honest. I just knew that um, there was like a really healthy budget, to be honest. And um, that was awesome. And, and, and they had approached me about this show, 50 States of Fright. And they told me that Christina Ricci was signed on to do it and a bunch of other really cool, like young actors. And so that was all just like really exciting to me. And it was just like a fun little, little horror one-off thing. And I love horror and I got to be dragged across the bathroom floor and like spit up blood, you know, it's like super fun. Um, and as far as the, the platform not working out, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about it, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on it, to be honest? I, I've I've talked myself in circles on it. The idea of bite-sized content, yes, is very appealing to me. I kind of think that they wound up in an awkward situation because of the pandemic. It was something you were supposed to take on the go, and all of a sudden right. it launches, and we're all stuck at home. Right. That, that was definitely a big factor. But I did see some good stuff on there. Um, I did want to ask you actually about working with the director of your installment of 50 States of Fright because Daniel's super cool and I think everyone out there needs to see Cam. So what was it like working with him? And is there anything about his approach to his work that makes you hopeful that we're going to see his work and hear his name more and more in the future? I'm sure we will. He's so talented. I love Daniel. Um, Daniel and Issa, who actually directed it together. She wrote it and he kind of directed it, but they're like a team um, on this project. And I actually met with them ahead of time for on this other script that that they had written that I that I really loved. And um, so we were kind of talking about that. And then they brought up the 50 States of Fright thing. They were like, oh, we would love for you to do this. And I was like, okay, I like them a lot. They're really cool. This would know, be fun. Um, and I loved, I love working with him. I love their approach. They're, they're super easy and, and cool and laid back to work with and very creative people. And I love that Daniel and Isar are just very much like their own 
people. Like they march to the beat of their own drum and they um, are bold in the choices I think that they make. And yeah, I loved working with them and I loved working with him and would love to do it again in the future. I feel like that quality you just pinpointed is an absolute must, especially when it comes to genre filmmaking. Definitely. And I'm so ashamed to say I still haven't seen Cam yet. No, but that's a good thing because now I get to get really excited that you get to watch it for the first time. And that yeah. Was- <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to watch it. I'm going to do that. Highly recommend it. Before we get into trust, I have one more question for you about hosting the Kids' Choice Awards, because I'm very big into Oscar season. And right now I'm in the thick of watching all of these award shows that are happening, you know, over Zoom and in completely different manners than what I'm accustomed to. So given your experience for everybody else out there hosting or producing one of these shows, is there any kind of, I don't know, a tip or a trick or a key takeaway that you would give them to make the most of these types of productions right now? I don't know. I think just get creative with it, you know, because obviously being slimed is a huge part of the show. And they were like, well, do you want to do the slime thing? I know this is at your house. I was like, guys, I'm getting slime. So send on over the buckets. Like we're making it happen. And uh, my stepdad stood on like the balcony um, in our backyard. And my sister and I stood below. And he just like dumped these, these buckets on us one after another and got like way too much pleasure out of it. Like he loved it. Um, so I think, I don't know, just like have fun with it and utilize the space and get creative and, um, in a way, it's almost kind of nice to be hosting something or doing something from your home. It's super comfortable and, um, you know, half the time you only have to look good from like the waist up. So it's great. <laughs> it's kind of a dream job. <laughs> you might be wearing sweatpants right now. It's great. <laughs> I might be. I'll never tell. You've also totally convinced me that, I don't know, the Grammys and the Oscars, they just need to send the winners buckets of slime and immediately their ratings will go up. Yep, exactly. They should. Take a page of the audience book. All right, so trust now. First off, just broadly, what is it about that script and that character that made you say, I have to do this project next? Yeah. Um, so as soon as I read the script, I just really loved it. It was such a page turner. I was really engaged by the story. I loved how at one minute I thought it was going one direction and then I get new information and it's uh, totally not what I thought was happening. So that kept me really engaged. And I also love the fact that it takes place in New York. I'm always drawn to movies that film in New York and New York becomes like a character in the film, you know, and, and I love that so much. It also takes place in the art world a little bit. So I'm a huge art lover over here. And that was super cool to me. Uh, And I also love the fact that, you know, it's just, it's a relatable relationship drama and it explores the topic of cheating. And I think it's going to start a lot of conversations about what, what do you really consider cheating? Is this considered cheating or is this person right in what they did? Would you have done that? Are they wrong in what they did? So I'm excited for people to watch the movie and to, to hear the dialogue and to hear the conversations that they're going to have afterwards, because those are my favorite kind of kinds of movies. The ones that like get you thinking and, and get you talking. I'm a big believer that New York is the best city in the world. You though, in some scenes, you got to shoot mighty close to a very, very busy Times Square. So uh, yeah. what did that element of filming in New York pose for you guys? Oh, that was so much fun. Uh, New York, I would have to agree with you. I think it might, it might be the best city. I, I love it so much. There is nothing like the magic and energy of New York. It's just as soon as you step off that plane and you're in that city, you just feel it. It inspires me. It makes me feel alive. Um, and it was just really fun. I remember the first scene that I actually filmed, uh, was the fight scene between Matt and I, where I get out of the cab and I'm, you know, really confronting him about this new information that I've learned. And we were filming it kind of like a little gorilla style because we flew in early to get these shots because the Christmas decorations were still up. So anyway, it was like a little gorilla style. We didn't have like a huge crew. And so a lot of people kind of gathered around on the streets and were just like watching us film and do the scene take after take and it became like a little play and after we would it was like this really dramatic emotional scene and I was like don't touch me and whatever and after we would finish people would be like yeah we got it great job and it was so funny just like all these New York characters on the sidelines and I would turn a corner and 
like, you know, it was like this little elevator area. There would be fans there like, hi, can we get a picture? It's just like, so funny. I'm just like coming out of this emotional moment. Like, hi. Um, that was the first scene you shot of the movie? That was the first scene we shot, yeah. That is a, I feel like that's a lot of heavy lifting right out the gate. It was, it was. I was a little nervous, but, um, cause it's really one of the most important scenes of the film. Um, but I felt like it really, it set the tone really well and, and Matt and I work really well together. So, um, you know, I felt really comfortable with him and, and Brian, our director is so great. And it just really worked out. I hadn't seen the movie that the two of you made beforehand. So I don't know how much you actually worked together on that one, but what was it like reuniting with Matt? Was there anything about that project that came in handy when you guys were working maybe more closely together on this one? I had so much fun working with Matt. We did a movie called Naomi and Eli's No Kiss List together. And he's just like a really grounded down to earth guy. He's a super talented actor. And he's just like, he's a New Yorker, like through and through. He like takes the subway to work. He's like, why why would you not take the subway? Like there's traffic. this is ridiculous. You know, he's just like such a New Yorker. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed working him with the, on, on that project. We got along super well. And so when I signed on to do this project, um, Brian had asked me if, you know, anyone had come to mind to play Owen. And I immediately thought of Matt and I thought that he would be perfect for it. And I really think he did a great job. So, I mean, I guess just having that familiarity with someone from the past was really cool. And knowing that, you know, knowing what I was getting myself into, you know, um, because he is, he is super easy to work with. He is very talented. He's very professional, you know, all the good things that you look for in a leading man. Damien Light is interested in buying a few of his paintings. That's big news. I know, I know, I know. And I would send him alone tomorrow, but things could get, you know, he's not a people person and, and making the sale could be huge for us. It could really make all this hard work pay off. This, this is amazing. Yeah. So I'll be back from Paris in like two days. Yay. What's that? I said, yay. I also think it's important to highlight passions of yours that happen off screen as well. So are there any particular causes or philanthropies that are just very important to you right now that you want to make sure everyone watching this knows about? Girl Up is an organization that I've been working with for a while all about empowering young girls and women in developing countries that don't have the same opportunities that we do. So go support them. They're amazing. And now we have hit the end of ladies night and it's a rapid fire, kind of rapid fire, random question type thing. Ooh, love uh, it. Okay, let's do first, it. First question I've got for you is what is the most recent show that you've binge watched? Uh, Succession. You need to get on Succession. There's a show shooting in Manhattan. Call someone up. Oh my gosh. All right. So next up here, I might have done some Instagram snooping and I saw a photo of you like very close to a snake. So was that the the most intimidating or exotic animal that you've ever been up close and personal with? And if not, what was the most intimidating one? No, the most intimidating one would be that same trip. I was in South Africa um, and I was pretty much face to face with a lion. So that was crazy. They were behind a fence, obviously, but I was like this close. It was crazy. I have pictures that I haven't posted yet, but I will. It was amazing just to hear like the the ferocity of their roar. It's just, you've never seen anything like it. Like it. It's nuts. Do you have any daredevil qualities in you? Is Is bungee jumping and skydiving an option? No, not really. I'm a little more cautious when it comes to those things. I just would rather not risk it. I just, I watched The Bachelor. I saw The Bachelor recently. Rachel went skydiving and then she freaking slammed against the ground and like hurt her neck and bruised her face. And I was like, no, I see, this is why I don't, I'm good. (laughs) Not not for me. (laughs) Now I don't have to think about that. Yeah. If you could cast yourself in one of your favorite movies out there, what movie and what character would you choose? I would love to play the role of Summer in 500 Days of Summer. I love that movie so much. That is an excellent choice. That love also it. has a, a heavy music element to it. I yeah. like it. Does, it does. So the last two in this section are, are a little deeper. And for the second one, you could take it in a lighter direction if you prefer. But first here, who is a, film, who is a female filmmaker that you think is changing the industry for the better right now? I'm a really big Greta Gerwig fan. I think she's so incredibly talented and has an amazing sense of humor and a great eye. And I just love her whole style and just her and everything she's about. So 
I'm definitely on the on the Greta Gerwig train. So Greta Gerwig needs to direct a movie musical and you need to be in it. Oh my God. Oh, oh I would, oh, I would explode. I feel like if I say some of these things, they will manifest. Speak them into the universe. You have to. Yeah, right. I think Greta Gerwig is directing the next music movie musical and I am in it. Can't wait. This last one is the one you can keep light or go in a heavier direction if you prefer. But what is the biggest fear that you've ever had that you've actually managed to overcome? The biggest fear that I've ever had that I've actually managed to overcome. I have dealt with anxiety and it's very real, you know, when you feel them and it can be incredibly tough and difficult and hard. And you sometimes feel like, man, how, how will I ever deal with this or overcome this? Um, and, uh, and there are moments where I've been scared to do things in certain projects and, um, and I've done them and I got through it and I'm proud of myself for doing it and pushing myself. So that would be a pretty big thing. I would say, yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. You never know who out there is listening to this and is a big fan of yours. And yeah. you say that might make a big difference to them if they're experiencing something. That would be awesome. That would yeah. Be awesome. That's why, that's why we always like to end on that one. Cause I think I it's love awesome. that. So I got to let you go, but huge congratulations on trust for everybody out there who wants to check out the movie. When you're watching this interview, it's available right now in select theaters and on demand. So go check it out. Victoria, thank you again. And congratulations. Thank you so much. I hope you guys like the movie. Thank you. Thank you.